the rich man and Lazarus, the defining go-to story in the Bible for many Christians that seemingly proves the reality of hell. But does it? Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to this power message entitled, The Rich Man and Lazarus, Did You Know? This is our fourth and final video about this parable and our 11th installment in the Say What series, which deals with so-called hell. So please be sure to watch all of them and click onto the subscribe button of our YouTube channel to receive all of our new Power Gospel videos. So let's get to it. I'm on record already that this particular story is a parable. It's a fictitious made-up account that Jesus told to drive home a teaching point. And that teaching point was directed at the Pharisees, the so-called leaders of Judaism at that time. According to Jesus, the Pharisees were false leaders. They were pompous and greedy, and they loved the approval and the applause of people. And this parable about the rich man and Lazarus was just one more in a series of indictments against them, delivered from a God who did love them, but he wanted to wake them up. And if you or I happen to be modern-day Pharisees, high-minded about our faith and impressed by our stature, well then, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus is directed squarely at us too. So let's read this portion of the scripture and then do a quick review of our previous three messages on this subject, and then we'll finish with a portion that I'm calling did you know? Let's read from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. Now there was a rich man, and he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, enjoying himself in splendor every day. And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate, covered with sores, and longing to be fed from the scraps which fell from the rich man's table. Not only that, but dogs were also coming and licking his sores. Now it happened that the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's arms. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades he, that's the rich man, raised his eyes being in torment and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his arms. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life you received good things and likewise Lazarus bad things. But now he is being comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set, so that those who want to go over from here to you will not be able, nor will any people cross over from there to us. And he said, Then I request of you, Father, that you send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, in order that he may warn them so that they will not come to this place of torment as well. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. But he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. So there you have it. The portion of the scripture that the majority of Bible-believing, born-again Christians believe is a true and accurate description of the afterlife. According to them, Jesus is the Savior of the world, but he will only save you if you do your part and believe in him. And while these Christians certainly debate about what it means to believe, they certainly do not debate about their binary view of the fate of all of mankind, that fate being that every person ever born is either destined to be comforted in heaven or to be tormented in hell forever. As I said, this is our fourth installment about the rich man and Lazarus, so let's do a quick drive-by review of the previous three. In Power Message 139, we laid the groundwork that Jesus was a tremendous storyteller. And he referred to his stories as parables. In fact, one-third of the material contained in the four Gospels were parables told by Jesus, 38 of them altogether, including the one I just read. In Power Message 140, we compared the parable of the rich man of Lazarus against the one that immediately preceded it, the parable of the unrighteous manager. They had many similarities, which just served to confirm that the target audience for both was, well, you guessed it, the Pharisees. And in our most recent installment, Power Message 141, we played the if-then game. For example, if the parable of the rich man and Lazarus is true, then faith in Jesus does not matter. Because there's no reference at all in the parable about the faith of Lazarus or the lack of faith of the rich man. And if the parable of the rich man and Lazarus is true, then Abraham is the mediator between God and mankind and not Jesus. And if the parable of the rich man and Lazarus is true, then those with mansions in heaven will plainly see and hear those being tormented in hell. And finally, I close with this blockbuster statement, 
which for me is a real hell buster. If the parable of the rich man and Lazarus is true, then so many other scriptures are false. And that's why I want to go in this message, to show you with some did you know statements. Let's start. Did you know that while on the cross, Jesus forgave all of the Pharisees as well as the Roman soldiers who tortured and crucified him? Look what Jesus said in Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And that included the Pharisees who conspired to have him killed and the Roman soldiers who pulled it off. And here's a huge one. Did you know that God is on record as saying he is against burning people? Yes, you heard me. To burn in hell, according to God, is fake news. In the Old Testament, there was a despicable ritual that was practiced by pagan cultures, which involved, and I can hardly even say this, offering their children by fire to the pagan gods of Molech and Baal, burning their children to death as some kind of a religious ritual to please the gods. And sadly, even some of the Jews began to be drawn into this hideous practice. Now, you say you've never heard of this. Well, go ahead and Google this phrase. What does the Bible say about child sacrifice? Then click on to the Got Questions article that appears, and there it talks about this horrific ritual that was practiced by the Ammonites and Canaanites. And unbelievably, even three kings in Israel, Solomon, Manasseh, and Ahaz, they allowed this barbaric ceremony to be performed by their own people. Now, two things about sacrificing children by fire. Number one, God warned against this vile ritual. In Leviticus 18.21 it says, You shall not give any of your children to offer them to Molech, and so profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. It also says in Deuteronomy 12.31, You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every abominable thing that the Lord hates, they have done for their gods. For they even burn their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Number two, not only did God warn against entering into such an evil practice, but look what else he said about burning human beings. Jeremiah 19.5, They have built the high places of the false god Baal to burn their sons in the fire as burnt gifts to Baal. This is a thing which I never told them to do nor spoke of. Now watch this. It did not even come to my mind. Slam the door shut. God said, don't do it. Don't burn anyone. I never told you to do it. It never even entered my mind to burn a human being. It's also noteworthy that human burnt offerings were performed in the Hinnom Valley, which was an area that was below and just outside the city of Jerusalem. Well, here's a fun fact. The Hinnom Valley is also known as Gehenna. Gehenna was an actual place on the map. But the King James Version and a few other Bible translations, well, they changed the word Gehenna to the word hell, which was totally a means to scare the hell out of non-believers in Jesus. Stay tuned to the Phil Henry Power Gospel because the next Greek word we will deal with in the Say What series is the word Gehenna. Now a few more did you knows. Did you know that there are 40 such warnings against burning children in the Old Testament? 40! But I have to ask you, do you really think that God is going to burn His children? And did you know that in Acts chapter 3 verse 21, Peter preached about God's plan to, watch this, restore all things. Acts 3.21, heaven must welcome him, that's a reference to Jesus ascending to heaven, until the times of the restoration of all things, which God spoke about by the mouth of his holy prophets from the beginning. And did you know that in Revelation 21.5, God doubles down on this restoration idea when he instructed John to write this, Behold, I am making all things new. To make all things that already exist like they're new, is to restore them. God's plan is for restoration, not condemnation. And did you know that God is way more merciful and gracious than you ever thought? In Ephesians chapter 2, we see this mercy and grace working together. Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5, But God, being rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And did you know that mercy is to not receive what we do deserve, and grace is to receive what we do not deserve? And God is all about both. And finally, did you know that I and many others like me, we refer to ourselves as Christian universalists? And we do not scare people with the news that you might be eternally separated from God unless you act now. 
But we do share the good news that Jesus has already saved you, has already paid for your sins, and that he stands at the door of your heart and knocks. And he'd like for, to enter in and have a relationship with you. Now that's a great offer. It's not turn or burn, it's just turn. It's not choose or lose, it's just choose. And so the rich man of Lazarus, the parable of the rich man of Lazarus, it was a story time with Jesus. A story with a powerful punch to those in whose, those days, the so-called leaders on the outside, but who were pompous and greedy and impressed by themselves on the inside. So let's look in the mirror and make sure that that's not who we are. But rather, let's be humble and generous and be impressed by Jesus. After all, as the true story goes, he bore on the cross all the sins for all mankind for all time, and he's the savior of the world. And did you know that that even includes the rich man? So this concludes our mini-series about the parable of the rich man of Lazarus. And as I already mentioned, get ready for me to burn the word Gehenna next. But don't hold your breath until then. Instead, go to my website or our YouTube channel and check out our playlist that's labeled God Saves All, Biblical Universalism. And there you will find 22 messages dedicated to this subject. And for daily inspiration, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next time, may God bless you and empower you.